Hey guys, what's up? It's Ripe again. In today's video, an entitled neighbor was mega jealous of my swimming pool and decided to use it whenever she pleased without my permission. She ended up vandalizing it because she despised me. Here is what happened. Let's dive right into the story. So let me start this off by saying that I'm very grateful for my house. I live in a nice neighborhood and most of my neighbors are lovely. My backyard is my pride and joy. I've spent countless hours on it and had recently purchased a swimming pool that I'd been saving up for for months. My next door neighbor, let's call her Karen, has often made remarks about my garden, claiming it's not fair that mine outshines hers and that when her friends come over, they make comments as if that's my problem. Anyway, when I got the swimming pool, she saw it through her upstairs window and came over, knocking on my door. She started going on and on again about how unfair it was, practically scolding me about it. Weeks later she switched up completely and started asking if she could use it. At first I was not really fond of the idea of a stranger using my brand new swimming pool, but after a while I gave in and said that she could. I figured what was the harm. For the next few weeks she would come over in her bathing suit and knock on, asking to use the swimming pool. But soon enough it was becoming nearly every day and it was getting frustrating. One afternoon I was lounging in the swimming pool with my friends when I heard a faint knock coming from inside. Opening the door, it was Karen. Hey neighbor, here to use the swimming pool, Karen said with a smile, gesturing to her towel. Ah, sorry, me and my friends are using it at the moment, I replied, assuming that would be it. Um, I don't think so, she replied, her smile vanishing like a cloud of smoke. Wait, what? You had the whole day to use the swimming pool, surely you can spare it for a few hours. I've been at work all day and my friends are here now and are currently in it. You cannot come and use it and it's not the swimming pool, it's my swimming pool. Excuse me, like I said, you and your friends have had all day to use it. Why do you think you have the right to hog it? Her face was growing red. Well, because I bought it and it's mine. You're trying to apply the rules of a public pool to my back garden. It's just ridiculous. I very well am not and don't be silly. Go and tell your friends you will all go inside and watch a movie or something. Let me in now. No. No? Please leave, I'm not permitting you access. What makes you think you have the right? It's my property and get lost now. I slammed the door in her face, walking back to my friends. I heard her banging on the door a few more times, shouting things through it, but ignored her. I was worried she would go into her yard and start badgering us from her side of the fence, but luckily she didn't do that. The following day, she came around again asking to use the swimming pool. I've done some thinking and I don't think I want you using my swimming pool anymore. I told her firmly. What? Just because of our little spat? Well, I don't like the fact that your frequent visits have given you this sense of entitlement to my swimming pool. And that's the other reason, they are just too frequent. I thought you would just use it once or twice in a while, but every day is a piss take. Well, aren't you a charmer? This all sounds ridiculous. Now let me in or I will call the cops on you. Call the police? For what? Disrespecting my elders? I joked. Her face paled. How dare you? I'm not old. Now you better let me in or else. Are you threatening me? She smirked, putting her hands on her hips. Wanna find out? Fine, I replied, holding the door open further. I watched as her smile grew. See, what wasn't so hard, huh? Just before she got to the door, I slammed it shut in her face. I walked away laughing to myself as I heard her screaming through the door. Maybe I went too far, but hey, she is annoying. The next couple of days, Karen came around every single day, sometimes multiple times a day, and at ungodly hours of the morning too. She would first demand to use the swimming pool, to which I would say no, and then shut the door. Then she would stand there for ages, just banging and throwing herself at the door. I was beginning to get a bit embarrassed about what the other neighbors might be thinking. It happened so frequently that I began filming her each time she came around from the upstairs window. If this went further, which it did, I wanted proof of her harassment to give to the police. I also ended up installing security cameras that I'd been wanted to do for a while anyway, but this gave me more of an incentive. One of these cameras was in my back garden and it allowed a good view of the swimming pool. One night I woke up to the sound of splashing outside and looking out my window, it was Karen in my swimming pool. I also spotted a piece of fence that was much more crooked than the rest, she had clearly broken her way through. I was angered to say the least, the cheek of this woman, I checked my cameras and confirmed that yes, she did clamber through the fencing. 
I'd honestly just had enough of her and decided to go ahead and call the cops on her. I told them what had happened and that she had broken into my property. They sent two officers around and together we walked to the garden. From the time I had caught her in the swimming pool to the police arriving, she had changed her agenda and now had started vandalizing and destroying the swimming pool. We silently walked out back and watched as she hit the sides with a sledgehammer which she must have brought with her. I also noticed that she had carved all sorts of derogatory things into the sides of the swimming pool with a knife. Put down the weapon! One of the officers stated, preparing to reach for his gun. Karen Fro struck the hammer and turning around like a deer in headlights. What are you doing in this man's swimming pool? The officer asked Karma now that she had nothing in her hands. You don't understand, he has given me permission, she wailed. I certainly did not, I have proof that I have not been permitting access here. I replied and spent the next 10 minutes showing the officers all the proof on my phone of her banging on my door and me telling her to go away. It's not fair, why should you have this swimming pool all to yourself? It's not a big issue if I use it. Yeah, that's not how the world works, it's on his property and was bought by him. Yeah, well, I, uh... Karen rambled, her luck was running out. You're gonna be arrested for vandalism and breaking and entering of this property. The officer declared as he began reading out her rights and search. No! Karen yelled and before any of us knew what she was doing, she had lunged straight for me and had shoved me hard. I fell to the ground with a thud and didn't have time to brace myself before she began raining punches on me. Within seconds, the officers had dragged her off of me and handcuffed her. While Karen was dragged, kicking and screaming into one of the cop cars, I got in the other one and we all headed to the station. I gave my statement and sent over the video and CCTV footage of what she had done. Just before I was let go, the officers pulled me to the side and informed me that Karen has had a history of stalking and harassing previous neighbors too, which I found interesting and yet unsurprising. For formality, there was a quick trial held at court where she did try to defend herself, but the proof was heavily stacked against her. She was convicted of arm breaking and entering, vandalism, trespassing and harassment. With her previous criminal history of similar events, the judge sentenced her to six months behind bars as well as giving her a restraining order from me. She was also forced to pay any fees necessary for me to have my swimming pool fixed and as of right now, I'm typing all of this out while lounging in the warm water, finally at peace in my own swimming pool. And yeah, ripe stars, one of the first things I would do if I had such a nice swimming pool, I would invest in a really good fence so any entitled neighbors could not trespass on my property. Anyway, if you enjoyed this story, please don't forget to like the video and maybe even post a comment because that would help me tremendously. Thank you so much and the next one is titled Emotional Affair Drama. So I've been with my wife Deja for over 18 years now. I love her with all my heart and I never thought I would be in this situation. So so I work in a law firm office and have been there for almost a decade. This started when I met Sue. She was hired as a new secretary and we hit it off from there. My wife knows about Sue and has met her a couple of times. It started off small enough but then we started texting all the time. She would text me when she got home late or when she was going out somewhere with someone new. We would hang out regularly, things like that. But what really scared me into confessing was that I started to think about Sue even when she was not there. I would think about her just as much as I thought about my wife. I talked to my sister and she told me that I was in an emotional affair. She said it will only get worse and deepen and that it was only right that I would tell my wife. A week ago I sat Deja down and admitted to her that I cheated on her with Sue. She was confused and asked if I was joking. I told her that I was serious and I showed her all the texts that I had from Sue. She looked at me and asked if I've slept with Sue. I said no. She asked me had I even been physical with her and again I said no. She asked how did I cheat on her then and I told her that I emotionally cheated on her and that I was sorry. To my surprise, she just laughed really hard. She wanted me to clarify what emotional cheating was so I showed her all the info that I had but she said that it just sounded like it was a really good friend. She asked if I had a crush on Sue to which I agreed I was beginning to have a small attraction towards her. I was waiting on her to be angry or sad but that only seemed to make her laugh even more. I asked her what was so funny and she said that I was being too hard on myself and that as long as I don't cross the line into physical territory, I'm good. She said she will forgive me if it makes me feel better and went back to doing what she was doing. She had been giggling about emotional cheating days later, I'm extremely confused on what to do now. On one hand, I'm glad my wife took it so well and that it didn't affect our relationship but I still feel bad about this whole crush nonsense. I don't know what to do, please help me. 
update to the story, so a lot of people have been asking for an update to this, so I thought I would give them one. First off, with Sue, my attraction to her has dwindled to the point of a friendly co-worker relationship again. She did not do anything for that to happen, I think it was because she and my wife are so similar that I realized that I wasn't crushing on Sue because she was Sue, I was crushing on her because I missed my wife so much. I did put up boundaries like no more late night texts or putting that much energy into Sue. Although I don't think she really noticed because she started going out with one of the new interns so she doesn't message me that much anymore, so that's nice. Speaking of my wife, I did talk to her more about my crush with Sue and she said that she understands me having a crush because we wear our first everything, Deja was my first date, my first kiss and I was hers, we both never dated anyone in high school, so when we met in college we were like two peas in a pot. She stayed with me all throughout my bar exam and I stayed with her getting her library science degree. We talked more in depth about our boundaries and mine. She said that she doesn't find me thinking about or having crushes on other women as emotional cheating in her eyes because it's all internal and that she trusts me enough to make the right decision on that front. Basically, we agreed wandering eyes is fine, wandering hands is not and I asked her if she was ever worried that my crush would have turned into something more. She said that me being brave and comfortable enough to confess my feelings to her was all the proof she needed that I was still trustworthy to her. We decided to make more time with each other every day, even if that means going for a walk and enjoying the weather together. So far, it seems like things are going back to normal. Thanks, Reddit. And the next one is a petty revenge story. Never mess with a bus driver. So I'm a bus driver and passengers have to press a stop button if they want the bus to stop at the next stop. Pressing the stop button flicks on a huge banner on the front of the bus along with making a loud buzz. There are multiple stop buttons on the bus and the condition of buses are quite bad here, some of the stop buttons are just faulty. It's usually not a big deal as passengers can see if the banner is flicked on and if it's not the passenger can just press another button or verbally tell me to stop. However, it just doesn't register with some passengers that there is a huge visible and audible banner. Unfortunately, these same passengers tend to lose their minds easily. It was 9.30pm and I was driving between two large suburbs, let's call them Sunnydale and Riverdale. A passenger must have pressed the stop button but it didn't register on the banner. As I drove past the stop he yelled, You missed my stop dickhead! I apologized and tried to explain to him that the button must have been faulty and that I would drop him at the next stop. I told him that I could not drop him off on the side of the road because I would get in trouble from the bus company as they have GPS tracking whenever I open the bus door. The passenger just yelled, stop talking crap and open the door. I stopped at the next stop about 500 meters ahead but the passenger just yelled, just go to Riverdale mate, I ain't walking. Now what the passenger didn't know was that since Sunnyvale was a bigger town, the last bus from Sunnyvale to Riverdale was later than the last bus from Riverdale to Sunnyvale. He would be stranded at Riverdale 4 kilometers away from his stop. So I kept driving to Riverdale as the passenger requested. I dropped him and the other passengers off and then closed the door. I could see him checking the posted timetable on the bus stop. I put my bus into gear and pulled out. I heard him exclaim, hey wait, as I did so. Unfortunately, I could not have dropped him back to his stop even if I wanted to. I got a strict schedule and changed route numbers after each trip. My schedule now was to fill up the bus with diesel and head back to the depot. I filled up my bus and headed back to the bus depot. As I drove back I saw him walking on the side of the road. From 500 meters to 4000 meters. And the next one is titled Business After Closing Revenge. So I've been working at a subway restaurant for the past two years from the end of high school through my first year of college. I take classes in the morning and afternoon, so when I work it's usually a closing shift, only working 15 hours a week, full-time student. The only issue is I close by myself so it really toys with my anxiety whenever I get a rush or cannot finish certain duties by a certain time. So by the end of the night I'm usually so out of it mentally and just want to get home ASAP, we close at 10. So tonight I was closing like usual and I really wanted to get home as early as I could to finish an assignment due at midnight. Of course, with my luck, it turns out being one of the busiest nights we have had in a while because they recently sent out coupons for buy one get one footlongs after 4pm. Such a dumbass move, especially for alone closers. So by the time 10 rolls around, I'm finishing up the dishes, cleaning the line, counting the bread, wraps, bowls, etc. And I go lock the door at 10. And as I'm turning off the open signs, a guy walks in and I tell him, sorry we are closed. He wittily responds, then how did I get in here? I respond, I was walking to lock the door right now, you have to leave. Him, no, I want a sandwich. 
At this point, I'm just thinking, if this guy's ballsy enough to tell a business worker to stay open after hours because he wants service, and then I don't know what he could do. So I decide to make him his sandwich to just make him go away. He proceeds to take a good two to three more minutes just staring at the menu. Oh my god, I was fuming. Every dagger imaginable coming from my eyes was hitting his stare. I make his sandwich and then we move to the POS slash cash register. I go to put in the sandwich, tell him his total and he pulls out a $50 bill. Damn, I get so excited because we cannot accept bills over 20 and I pray he doesn't have any other method of pay. I tell him the bad news and he of course gets angry saying to break it anyway. Well, good thing I just dropped most of the money from the register into our safe before I went to lock up so I literally could not give him proper change for the 50. I explain it to him as I slide his sub to the side where he cannot reach it and he just leaves in a fit of rage. I proceeded to then take that sub home and eat it whilst finishing up my assignment and turning it in on time. Honestly, if he was not such a commanding douche, I would have just given him the sub and tell him not to worry about it. But if you're gonna force me to do my job past our posted hours and be a douche about it, you're not getting a break. And yeah, ripe stars, honestly, this is such a telling story and I'm not at all surprised by this. People are simply getting more entitled and have less empathy for others. If I see someone closing shop and working there alone, I won't ask him to make a sandwich for me. And now let's move on to the next story. It starts like this. I own a beautiful beach house that honestly is the only thing I wished was that I could live in more than I already do. My work causes me to travel for weeks to sometimes even months at a time. It can be exhausting, but let me tell you, nothing feels better after months away than walking into your own home and sitting on your couch. Before I married my wife, she knew that this was the type of job I had and what she was getting into. Sometimes she will choose to stay home, but most of the time she just comes with me to wherever it is I need to travel to. For her, it is great because it's like going on a ton of vacations in different countries. I am really fortunate that I met somebody so accepting of my job requirements instead of being upset by them. She works independently and as long as she has internet access, she can work from anywhere. Another great thing about my wife is that her parents are both fantastic and I get along great with them. Things with her family might be perfect if it wasn't for her entitled aunt that seems to always pop up when nobody even invited her. We came to learn that if we hosted any kind of event and family was invited, she would show up even if we wanted it to just be our parents or something. She is the dictionary definition of a Karen and I hate her. My wife even agrees that she is not like anybody else in her family and they don't know where this behavior came from. Just that she acts like this and they come from a family that does not believe in cutting people out of your life if they are related. And to be fair, she had never done anything too crazy in the past. That was of course until the plot of this story. I had just had a three month business trip in France and I couldn't wait to take some time off and relax in my bed enjoying the beach and my own shower again. What we did not expect was to see a car in the driveway and the lights on in our house. We are confused and looking back probably should have called the cops at this point. For all we knew, dangerous people were in our home, but our jet-lagged brains decided to just going in was the best decision. Luckily, nobody dangerous was in the house. That was where all the good news end, because my aunt-in-law, AIL from now on, seemed to be living in our house. There was mess everywhere and clothing thrown around with no care in the world. I didn't know what emotion to feel and a little wheel in my head seemed to have landed on just anger. Me, what are you doing in our house? What have you done? AIL, is that any way to speak to your family? I knew that you were no good for my niece. Me, how did you even get into our house? How long have you been here? AIL, oh, the lock on the back door wasn't so hard to get open. A beautiful beach house and you two barely even use it. Always dragging her away on some business trip instead of letting her enjoy the nice house. Wife, I've told you before that I want to go with him. I don't have to and sometimes I don't. Me, regardless of you butting into my marriage, I'm gonna ask you to get your stuff together and get out of my house. Aunt-in-law then got a creepy smile on her face and crossed her arms over her chest. I consider this as a Karen power move and before she opens her mouth knew that she was gonna say something I did not want to hear. Well actually, it's my house now. I have the papers to prove it and everything. If you want to change your attitude, I might let you stay here with me. 
Otherwise, Nis can stay with me and you can go sleep in your car or on a bench. At this point, chaos ensues with all three of us talking at the same time and nobody listening at all. The basics are me and my wife telling her that we never sold the house and she could not be serious trying to pass off those papers. My aunt-in-law going on about how horrible I am and never paid off the house so she had to step in and take it over so it could stay in the family. That everybody wanted to come over and enjoy the beach but never could because we were never home because of me. Basically insulting me while we told her that she was out of her mind thinking she could just steal our house. While the papers were fake, they were good fakes and she convinced people that she really did own the house. We have to take her to court in order for a professional to look over the papers and files and determine who really owns the property. So this meant in the meantime nobody could stay in the house and if you thought I was mad seeing her break in and try to steal the house, I was furious when I heard that of course. I just wanted my bed and shower, but now I was stuck staying somewhere else again while we waited for the courts to work things out. You can also bet that we were pressing charges against her for trying to steal our house, so the stakes were very high for her. Despite the papers looking very real, the court was able to determine that we were the rightful owners and she had forged the documents. Suddenly, her story was changing to being our guest and watching over the house while we were gone. I think this was to try and both claim that she didn't break and enter and trespass. Also, to try and claim that she was a squatter in the home and because of that she didn't have to actually leave. However, it didn't work and as for her claiming that she was a guest, I made a very public show of kicking her out and telling her to stay away from our house. That was the least of her problems as she was facing the criminal charges that we were pursuing against her. Even my other in-laws agreed with us that this was the right thing to do and did not try and talk us out of it. The consequences for the breaking and entering and trespassing were small. The falsifying documents on the other hand was a more serious offense and she was not getting off with just community service or a slap on the wrist for that. Nope, she was actually sent to prison and we were surprised at that turn of events. Since then we have taken measures to ensure our home being safer while we are gone for long periods of time. This included a security system that if a code is not entered the police will show up at the house. Also a camera so if they did get past the code we would get an alert of movement and see that our home was entered and could call the police ourselves. With AIL behind bars we were not too worried about any other relatives trying to pull what she did though. She was the only crazy one in the bunch and I can only say I am glad for that. And yeah ripe stars I am so glad that this crazy aunt ended up in prison because that is exactly what you should get for falsifying documents and trying to steal the property of someone else. And with this we have reached the end of the video, however if you cannot get enough of my content please check out my endless playlist where you can find thousands of hours of content. In addition please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any of my daily uploads. Thank you so much in advance and I hope to see you again tomorrow.